This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and in this video we're going to be implementing our command pattern in Unity. So I'm starting off with a project that's available in the description uh, below and you can access this and see that we've basically got a couple of initial scripts here which are really kind of the start point and end point of the pattern and it's set up right now to work without the command pattern but we're going to see how command pattern will improve it from there. So if you open up this project, you'll see that there is a plane here which has an input plane component attached to it. And this is really the kind of the stimulus. This is what's going to cause the command to ultimately be created. If we jump into Visual Studio, we can see what's going on in this. Basically what's happening here is that whenever we click our mouse, we cast a ray um, down to and see if we collide with the plane. If we do collide with the plane, we figure out what point we're colliding at, at the plane with. And then what we do is we create a random color and we tell our cube placer script to place a cube at that position with that color. The cube placer script is actually just a static script. All its job is is to instantiate a cube where it's told to do so and with the color that it's told. So all it does is it takes in that position and that color as well as the cube itself. And what we're doing is we're saying um, take the new cube, instantiate it, and then change the color on the mesh renderer um, to be the color that we tell it to assign. One little gotcha with this that I noticed is that you can call instantiate on a static class like this. You just have to make sure that you call it from the game object overall class. If you're um, working with a mono behavior, then it technically inherits from this game object, so you don't have to specifically write this. And Visual Studio will tell you you can simplify this and you don't need it, but you actually do, so be sure to include that. Now let's actually dive into creating the command pattern itself. So back in our Unity project, we're going to create three more scripts. The first one is going to be the interface for our commands. And this is going to be called iCommand. And that's simply a kind of C-sharp best practice that our interfaces start with a capital I. Next, we're going to create the specific command for placing the cube. And this is going to be called placeCubeCommand. If you're doing any research into design patterns, you'll see a lot of times the actual like specific command or specific thing of a pattern will be called the concrete command in this case, or concrete strategy, etc. So that's what that is there. And then finally, we're going to create the invoker, which will be another C sharp script, which I'll call command invoker. We'll start by opening up the command interface in Visual Studio. The first thing I need to do is change this from a mono behavior into an interface. So I'll delete the mono behavior inheritance and change this from class to interface. You can delete start and update. And as an interface, all I need to do is set up what methods will this interface provide. And so in this case, all we need is one and we're gonna call this void execute. This returns void, it doesn't take any parameters. This is a very, this is as generic as we can make a method as possible. And the reason for that is that our invoker may be taking in a lot of different types of actions, which are all going to kind of come from this I command, but we don't want the actual, like the nature of those actions to influence the actual call here. So we can always just call execute and we'll get the action to happen no matter what it is. With that, we can open up our place cube command. And in here, we're going to have this inherit not from mono behavior, but from our i command. So once again, we're not gonna need start and update because this is not a mono behavior. You'll notice that i command becomes red. That's because we are not implementing the execute method. We can solve this in a couple ways. You can either click on the light bulb and say implement interface, or if you do control period, it'll give you this option as well. Basically, control period is always sort of the, what can I do to fix this command? And so I'll do implement interface, and that populates with the proper thing here. Currently, we're throwing an exception saying we haven't implemented this yet because we haven't written the code for it. So we'll delete that exception throw. And instead, what we'll do in here is we're going to say cube placer 
dot place cube, and we're going to pass it in the parameters of a position, a color, and the cube transform. Now right now we haven't defined any of these, and where we're going to define these is we need to kind of establish that this command not only holds the actual method call, but the state, meaning what parameters should be in this particular command. So if we have one instance, it might be that we're placing a cube to the left and it's blue. In another situation, it might be over to the right and it's red. It needs, this command needs to always remember the specifics of the command. So we'll do that by populating this with a few variables. We'll put in a vector three called position, a color called color, and a transform that will hold our cube prefab. Now, to actually put the information into these, we need to create a constructor as well. We're only ever going to be putting this information in once when we create the command, so we can always just assign it on construction of the command itself. So we'll say public place cube command, pass in a vector three called position, color called color, and a transform called cube. And we'll say this dot position is position. So the just assigning each of the variables based on the parameters. Okay, so that's all that our command actually needs. Now we need a place to actually call this execution and to kind of store this command until it is executed. So we'll do that in our command invoker. This will be a mono behavior. We're going to keep that that way because we're going to want access to the update method and we'll see that in a minute. But we can actually get rid of start. We're not going to need that. What we are going to do, however, is we're going to create a variable in here, which is going to be sort of a list of commands that still need to be called. Imagine a scenario where we've clicked a number of times, we have a number of cubes waiting to be created, we're going to need a place to put those. And so I'm going to use a queue for this, where the first command that goes in is going to be the first command that's actually going to be executed. So it's going to be like they're waiting in line and getting called out one at a time. So I'm going to create a static queue, because there's only ever going to be one queue of these commands. So we'll say static queue, and it's going to take in the i command objects with the i command interface, and I'm going to call this the command buffer. I'm also going to do an awake function, which is going to initialize this command buffer. And then we're going to have a way to actually add commands to the buffer. I don't want to access the buffer directly because I don't want to be able to have other things take things off of the buffer, but I do want to have a method that will allow us to add commands to the buffer. So we're going to say public static void add command. It's going to take in a parameter of type i command, and I'm just going to call this command for simplicity's sake. And then here we'll say command buffer dot nq which is the Q equivalent of adding to a list. And we'll add in that command. Lastly, on update, what we're going to do is every frame we're going to check, is there anything in the command buffer? And if there is, then we will execute it. So we'll simply say in here, if command buffer dot count, which is the number of items in the command buffer at the time, is greater than zero, then we will get i command c equals command buffer dot dq, meaning take the take the um, very you know the the oldest object out of the queue and return it to us here. And then we're going to say that c dot execute. And again here we might have many different types of commands, but we can always just call execute and it will run the command for us. That's really what the kind of the power of the command pattern is that you're abstracting away the fact that you're placing cubes, that there's a color involved, anything like that. The invoker doesn't know anything about that. All it knows is it's saying execute this command. 
So we could actually simplify this a little further by simply saying command buffer dot dq dot execute. And that sort of just eliminates the need to take the command out into this separate variable. However, I did want to show it with the kind of added step here just to show that we're getting the command out first and then we're executing it. But I will keep that shortened version in there um, for reference. With that, we just need to go back to our input object. And instead of calling kubeplacer directly now, what we can do is we can create this command. So how we'll do that is we're going to, we can first create the command. We'll say, I command command equals a new place cube command, taking in hit info dot point as the position to create the cube. We're going to pass in our color C as the color, as well as our cube prefab. And then from there, now that we have this cube command, we can call command invoker dot add command because this is remember a static method. We can call it directly from the class itself. We don't have to call an instance of it and we'll add our command. Again, you could simplify this by just saying add command and then passing this whole thing as the parameter. This is just a little bit more explicit so that we can see the command is being created. At this point here, we have this object of the command. It's now being passed as an object, as a parameter into the command invoker and then being stored in the queue. So now we have this persistent command. This action has become persistent so we can use it in more interesting ways. But for now, let's see that we, now that we have all of this in place, Let's see that this is actually working properly in our project. So we will need to add the invoker to our project. So what I'll do is I'll create a new game object. I'm going to call this invoker. And I'm going to add a component to this of the command invoker. And so that's now going to say, you know, check every frame and say, do I have commands to execute on? If so, I'll execute them. With that in place, we can now hit play and we'll see that we still have the same basic functionality. If I click somewhere on the plane here, it creates a cube for us. And each time I do that, it does so. But what's happening now, what's different is that under the hood, rather than simply going directly from the plane here to the cube placer, the plane is taking the input, creating this object, passing it to the invoker, and then the invoker is ultimately calling the cube placer to place the cube. Obviously, this is just kind of adding a middleman, adding a couple extra steps in there. But in our next video, we're going to see how we can start to elaborate on this pattern to do some really interesting things and get some great functionality out of the pattern. Until then, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and consider becoming a Patreon backer to support more videos like this one. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.